Hello and welcome to this edition of Critical Mass Business Talk Show. I am so excited today. I have Dr. John Pham, CEO and co-founder of Embrace as our guest today. John, nice to see you again. Thank you for having me here, Rick, and huge shout out to all the entrepreneurs out there. So you, you said the inspiration for Embrace started to help children suffering from cleft palates and lip disorders. Can, can you explain how you and your partner were motivated to help these children? Yeah, so it's one of those crazy startup stories. Um, Embrace started out as my master's thesis in school, believe it or not. Uh, I was going through uh, my rotations at Children's Hospital Los Angeles. Um, I, I'm an orthodontist by background and um, also an engineer. But um, we were, um, you know, treating these kids with cleft lip and palate. And, you know, if you're familiar with uh, cleft lip and palate, you know, these, these kids um, have to come in for orthotic treatment for, you know, years on end, you know, usually coming from, you know, more socio, you know, economically challenged families driving from hours and hours away. And, you know, as an engineer, I kind of asked myself, you know, is there a way for us to, you know, use the latest advancements in engineering um, so that these kids don't have to come in every single month for these painful tightenings, uh, make it so that they don't have to uh, um, endure treatment for such a long period of time, you know, as I was saying, years on end. And is there a way for us to do it so they don't have to look worse before they look better? And um, so we came up with the smart wire uh, technology, which I can share with you later. But um, as we developed this, we, we, we found that the need for these things applies not just to, you know, children uh, with clep, uh, lip and palate, but also to people like you and me. And, you know, since we've commercialized, I mean, we have, you know, tens of thousands of smart wires out there now. And um, our youngest patient is eight years old and our oldest patient is 80 years old. I mean, mm. it's universal. It applies to everybody, this need. So you mentioned smart wire technology, and it came from the aerospace industry. And this has enabled your differentiation, if you will. And it's kind of the underpinnings of the architecture technology. Uh, how did you... I love this when an entrepreneur can find something in a non-related field and bring it in and um, use it as a foundation for a whole new way to look at a problem and solving it. So take us through how that process worked for you and and what how you were able to be inspired to do this, John. Yeah. So um, uh, in a previous life, uh, I was an aerospace engineer working for the Boeing company. Hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, working in aerospace, we use computers to sort of model the outcomes of how you want a plane to fly or how you want a satellite to, to sort of, I don't know, navigate through, through you know, its orbit. And we use certain um, material called uh, uh, nickel titanium, which is a programmed shape memory material that, uh, you know, a lot of satellites use. I mean, if, if, if you look at these, these satellites that have their solar panels, when they get up into space, it opens up and these beautiful panels kind of fan out. And I'm sure you've seen those mm -hmm. images. So uh, when we got to orthodontics, we thought, you know, is there a way for us to use these advancements in shape memory material and these advancements in digital computer programming um, to, you know, advance uh, teeth straightening? And so what we've done, and I have it right in front of me, if that's okay. Yeah, no, um, great. We've created a new category of teeth straightening we call the smart wire, which I'll put show right, right in front of you. Mm -hmm. See that? Mm -hmm. And each one of these smart wires is personalized for each patient. It's made out of memory material, so you can see no matter how I stretch it, it returns back to its original shape. See that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And um, so you imagine we use computers to program all the correct forces that's needed. It sits behind the teeth, and it works very gently and, and, and continuously to move the teeth you know, um, through treatment with no effort on your side. So we, we call it uh, orthodontics on autopilot. So, so do you remember the moment when the inspiration happened and you said, hey, this could solve a problem in the field that you're in now, the smart wire technology? I actually do. Um, it was uh, this one particular uh, uh, patient, I'll, I'll call her Susie. <laughs> uh, and um, 
you know, she was coming in from uh, the Inland Empire, driving to LA, you know, every single month. And this is like a two, three hour, you know, drive each way. And uh, when when we first developed, you know, um, uh, um, our first iteration of this, uh, we used it for jaw expansion. Hmm. And um, I remember like, you know, um, we still told her like, you know what, we still like to see you, right? So instead of come in, you know, next month, come in in three months. So, you know, you can save two appointments, right? And she came back and, you know, the, the thing had, you know, done its movement, but she was just so thrilled. She was like, you know what? Um, those, those, those two visits, I didn't have to drive all the way, you know, to uh, Children's Hospital. I was able to spend some time with my grandma instead. I was able to go to the park instead. And, you know, I didn't have to go through another tightening. And so, you know, my, 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 my treatment was so painful instead. And I was like, whoa, we have something here, right? And then, you know, um, story and story and story, you know, uh, since then, um, people just telling us that what we're doing here has, has enabled them to live their life the way they've never been able to before and smile in ways they've never been able to smile before. And I think that, that, that's what it's really about, you know, transformation. It is. And, and you, you must, you have many stories like that. And that's part of the, I think, the give back that entrepreneurs get from solving problems in a new way. And the, especially when you're in a B2C space and you actually see the impact on people's lives. You know, you've told me you prefer to create new categories versus disrupt existing categories. Is that what you're doing with Embrace, John? Yeah. So since a very young age, I've been inspired to not do more of the same, mm -hmm. but do something different. And there's a quote uh, that uh, my dear friend Eddie Yoon kind of passed on to me. As he said, you know, often uh, different is better than better. So, you know, I'll just kind of rewind back to when I was young. I mean, um, my parents were immigrants. And uh, I don't know, Rick, if I shared this with you, but we, we, we grew up as farmers. And uh, growing up in Southern California, sometimes you, you know, go off the freeway and you see these, these people on the side of the freeway selling fruits and vegetables and stuff. So Absolutely. You know, um, we had some kids like selling oranges on the side of the freeway uh, and us being Asian, um, you know, we weren't selling oranges. We actually sold Asian herbs instead. And, you know, from an early age, again, I kind of realized, okay, well, there's a place for oranges. There's a place for bok choy. There's a place for apples. There's a place for the guy selling lemonade, you know, and if, 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 if I just sold a better orange, then I'm cannibalizing, right? And fast forwarding to sort of with embrace and what we're doing here, um, again, there's multiple ways to straighten teeth. And some people want the conventional methods. Some people want the plastic things that you pop in and out of your mouth. Um, but, you know, with, with the 500 million consumers who aren't getting treatment right now, right. what I look at is what do they want? Why are they not walking into orthotic practices? And that's what Embrace does. It's creating a new category to tap into new consumers and grow the market. You know, we uh, had a chance to talk about uh, influences and you men mentioned one and then we we talked about this book, Niche Down and Play yeah. Bigger. I'm wondering if you, our audience are lifelong learners, as are you, John. I'm wondering if you could maybe just speak to these two books and what they might have meant for you. I have a whole uh, drawer full of Play Bigger right here. And actually, <laughs> um, you know, I'm showing you three of them here. But as an entrepreneur, I learned early on that... Um, as your company scales, your idea scales, you know, it's, it's, it's good to have common language, right? And so, you know, just a business pearl, a leadership pearl I'll pass on to folks here is I've learned that a lot of the truth is in these books. And so, you know, we, we have a book nook here in the company mm -hmm. where everyone kind of taps into certain books and we pass around common knowledge. But, you know, going back to your, your question about, you know, play bigger, um, yeah, I, I, it's a definite book I think every entrepreneur should read because, you know, it, 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 it pushes you to question why things are the way they are and help you realize that things are the way things are the way they are today because someone changed the way they were yesterday. Right. Yeah. And that better isn't really better. Different is what you want. 
especially right. when you're creating categories, which you're doing with Embrace. So let's talk about Embrace and you as an entrepreneur, John. Um, when did you and your co-founder look at the business and say, I, we feel like this thing is going to succeed and be viable? You know, this kind of goes into the question of why are you doing what you're doing? Mm -hmm. And uh, it started off first as, again, bringing a way for these 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 kids that were driving from hours and hours away to, you know, have treatment that was, you know, uh, more comfortable, more aesthetic, you know, those types of things. And then and then it evolved into um, something to change an industry, you know. And, 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 you know, now it's kind of evolved to um, changing the way people think about an industry, right? But um, I think your question, again, was when did we know we had something viable? Yeah, when um, did you know that there was a business that was, could be scaled? Well, early on, it's kind of funny because uh, I'm, I'm a researcher at heart as well. And we were trying to apply for these grants from um, the dental NIH. Um, you know, from these dental resources, and we kept getting declined. Hmm. No, no, no. Nobody would want that, right? Because <laughs> orthodontics is the way it is. Yeah. We want braces, and that's it. It's right. a finite market. And so for us to get funding, we actually had to go outside of dentistry and go into the school of engineering, go into the school of business. And we actually applied to these business competitions. And so if, if you guys look on the internet, you'll see photos of us early on holding these $5,000 checks, $10,000 checks, right? Anyway, the point I'm making here is that in these business competitions, we would compete against 3D printing technologies, you know, self-driving technologies, the cure to the flu. I mean, you know, cancer therapeutics, all these crazy things. And whether we won the competition or we didn't win, and we did win every single one of them, but... Um, People would walk up to us and say, hey, you know what? What you're doing may not save lives, but it definitely changes lives. This is something I would want for myself. You know, whether you were a VC or a judge or whatever, somebody would walk up and say, I want this for myself. Even orthodontists would come up and say, I want this for myself. <laughs> right? So it was one of those things where we kind of said, well, maybe the gatekeepers don't see this as a viable business because obviously they don't. They're the gatekeepers. But everybody else around sees this as something viable. So um, I, I, I would say probably from our first pitch, that was outside of dentistry, right? And you know, the story is a $5,000 check became a $5 million check, became a $50 million check. And we just recently announced we closed a Series D of $102 million. So we raised, again, $175 million over the last couple of years. Wow. So there's at least 175 million reasons why someone would want this. So I think that makes it a decently viable business proposition. So, so I... I during that story, uh, which was powerful, it gave me goosebumps because it's a. I look for transferable, teachable moments, John, and you gave us one, which is when you are in this space of being different, you actually have to look to non-standard places to get the That's support because the industry is not going to embrace you. Well, true category creation is realizing that there's a problem the world has that no one in the world knows it has. I mean, let's just rewind back and, you know, I have my phone in front of me, but when Apple, when Steve Jobs was on stage showing this thing, saying that it cost a thousand dollars almost, the world thought he was crazy because everyone thought the flip phone, smaller, smaller, faster was the answer. Right. Right. And, 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 you know, Airbnb, you know, Uber, I mean, you can go on and on and on, right? The, the, the true category creation is you don't know what the problem is. So of course you don't see the solution. And now my new Android phone is a flip phone. So <laughs> what's old is new again in what's some ways. Old? I mean, with all that being said, sometimes there's also no new truth, right? Mm -hmm. And then you got to reflect upon, you know, the past to kind of see, well, what's the next iteration of the future going to look like? So, so from the outside, it looks like you and your partner and your team at Embrace have it figured out. But, but I'm, I'm sure over the years that you've built this business, you faced serious challenges to the business. And, and I'm wondering, was there a time when you felt the business might be at risk and may not succeed, even though it had all the potential and promise that you were seeing? 
Rick, what are you talking about? We're an overnight success. It only took 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Um, you, your question was, w were there times we ever doubt it? Yeah. Um, I mean, I will say that when you have an idea that's big enough and you have people who believe enough, then all those trials and tribulations, you know, don't matter because you will fail over and over and over and over and over again. You're supposed to fail, right? If you're not failing, you're not learning. Mm -hmm. but if the why and the how and the and the and the and the and the reason is big enough, then it will out sort of weigh all those little failures. So um your first question is when did I know this was a thing? Again, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, at our first pitch, we knew, we knew, right? Um, but you know, we were supposed to fail a thousand times between now and between then and now, right? With again, dentistry telling me that this is not what people want. Again, you know, um, not being able to get funding early on. Uh, this thing called COVID nineteen happened. You know, where of all industries in dentistry, you know, <laughs> you're opening your mouth, breathing into people, right? But through COVID, I mean, we were able to actually come out stronger than ever, right? So. So, you know, I guess every single day you're supposed to fail, but every single day you, you, you know you're supposed to win. So it's this kind of juxtaposition between the two that's happening all the time for every entrepreneur. And, and if we have time, I want to come back to the idea of the impact of COVID on your business. But before we go there, I, you know, you mentioned earlier your latest round of financing and funding. I'm wondering from your perspective, what do you see as the future for Embrace? It's a good question, right? Um, at the very basis of it, you know, we talk about teeth straightening itself, growing and expanding, but it's really only about five to 10 million people getting teeth straightening each year. Whereas everybody in the world has teeth, <laughs> you know, there's 500 million consumers every single day that are taking care of their face, taking care of their skin, you know, doing cool sculpting, doing hydrofacials. These people are not opting into teeth straightening. So we want to at least be able to expand the pie, right? And educate the world that teeth straightening is for everybody, right? But, you know, more than that, when you're, when you're selling a better smile, you're selling confidence, right? You're, 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 you're selling a, a vision of a, of a new you that's possible. Hmm. And I think, you know, for us, that starts with teeth straightening, but it doesn't end there. Right? Ah. And, and the type of people we have around our table, you know, um, are people that brought these brands in these white spaces, um, such as hydrofacial, such as cool sculpting, such as LASIK, right? So, you know, it's all the same consumer that we're going, you know, towards. And so my vision for, for, for uh, Embrace um, and teeth straightening and dentistry is that we can bring it more into the mainstream connected with all these, you know, other categories I mentioned about people who want transformation for themselves. I don't know this and, and I apologize for that, but um, how much of your revenue is US North America? And do you see the rest of the world as a opportunity as well? Yeah. So um, right now uh, we are focused uh, mainly uh, domestically in the US. Uh, but again, everybody in the world <laughs> has teeth and everybody in the world, I think, wants to smile and feel good about themselves. So we definitely have plans to go OUS aggressively uh, in the future. Mm -hmm. So so let's reel back to the conversation about how COVID made your business stronger. And this is, again, one of those times for entrepreneurs when externalities can actually work in your favor and help you. I, I, I've seen articles about people being on Zoom and seeing themselves so much that has had some positive impact. So could you talk about a little bit more about that? One of my mentors told me um, that while COVID was definitely terrible, uh, you know, in, 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 in many ways, um, if, you took a, if you take a macro view at it, um, COVID didn't stop anything. It just accelerated everything. And the folks, the entrepreneurs, who were really willing to embrace change and look forward and see how to pivot and you know create the new future? I think COVID really enabled all those people to fly. Um, and if anything, you know, uh, again, I come from an immigrant family, 
And so I just kind of said, you know, let's go back to our, to our immigrant group roots because as immigrants, as all Americans are immigrants, actually, you know, some point one of our ancestors left what they knew, left what they had, left the status quo to come to this country, which is a new category at the time, to pave a new future for us. With no no rules, no no idea of what the future was. So, you know, I don't I don't know if I'm answering your question, but you know, it it it, it, it all ties just ties into just yeah paving that future. So, so there's been a theme in our conversation, John, which is look beyond the walls of your industry for inspiration and and an opportunity to create a category, but. One of the places that I know you received inspiration throughout your life, and you've mentioned it several times, is your family. And in specific, I've heard you mention your mother a number of times, not necessarily they in this interview, but throughout our conversations. And so I'm wondering if you might set the context here for a little bit of how that person has helped to shape you into the entrepreneur that you are today. Oh, I mean, I definitely got to give a shout out to mom <laughs> for sure. Um, man, all those sacrifices. I, I remember just early on, you know, um, she pushed me not just to, of course, I had to get the good grades, you know, um, but she always pushed me to be myself, hmm. you know. Um, uh, again, I, I mean, I don't know if I get into this, but obviously being, being an immigrant, you know, I, I couldn't be whiter than the white kids, right? Um, and so I just had to be me, you know, an Asian American, whatever that meant for myself, right? Um, and uh, when I didn't think I had the chops to be an orthodontist, because it's a very competitive, you know, um, industry, uh, my grades weren't high enough. She said, you know, it's okay. You're an engineer by, by you know, by training. Um, you were on the streets selling vegetables next to the kids selling the oranges. You know, tell that story. Just be yourself, right? Um, and even up to today. You know, doing doing what we're doing here now, creating a new category. She's just pushing me again. Just just be yourself. You know, believe in your roots. Uh, you do you. So mm -hmm. gotta give a shout out to mom for that. Excellent. All right. So if someone who's listening or watching this interview either now or in the future would like to connect with you on LinkedIn, how do they find you, John Fam? Yeah. So uh it's uh just go to LinkedIn slash Dr. John Fam. That's D R. J-O-H-N-P-H-A-M, as in Mary. Well, I've been looking forward to this interview since you first agreed to do it. It has uh, not disappointed me. It's been uh, just exciting to spend this time with you. I really appreciate you giving a little bit of your experience for the benefit of our listening audience. So thank you very much for being a part of the Critical Mass Business Talk Show community, John. Thank you for having me here. And again, all the entrepreneurs out there, just keep doing you. Excellent. Until the next time we all have a chance to get together here on this platform or however you might be viewing or listening to this interview. Um, I'm Rick Franzi, host of the show, and I hope that all of your business decisions will move your company in a positive direction.